Praise the Lord. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be a little bit warm. Our AC is out this morning. It's all right because uh, just act like we're in Samoa. Amen. Come on. Act like we're in the tropics. They worship God over there, don't they? They don't get upset because of the heat today. It's not going to be on the heat, it's going to be on Jesus. Amen? Let's stand this morning as we go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we thank, thank you for you, another opportunity, another day that you allow us to worship you in spirit and truth. Our desire, oh God, is to usher in your presence this morning. We ask you, O oh God, your presence so that healing and deliverance of God can be manifested in our midst. That you, O oh God, come in, begin to move up and down the aisle, the corners of our hearts, begin to make changes in us, to reform us, to cleanse us, to renew us. In the name of Jesus, there's nothing too hard for you to do this morning. And we appeal to you, O oh God, our true and living God, the righteous one, the holy one, the one that is called El Shaddai, Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Jesus, Jehovah Elohim, Lord God, Jehovah Shalom, oh, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Oh, 
God because 12 o'clock and we start talking about the goodness of God. How awesome God is. And I was telling them, this is God's timing. Not my timing, not your timing. But God shows this time for us to share His goodness. Not my goodness, but His goodness. Man. And we were just talking about the goodness of God, how my life was. And one of my sisters was testifying about what God has done for me. Because I was a broken, not so much in spirit, but in my body. I was blinded with one eye. I had a lock jar. I tore a Achilles tendon. I, I mean, it was so much that I fought uh, fibroid cancerous for more than 10 years. But God. But God. God. He knew the situation. And it was her that was telling the testimony. How God can allow witnesses to testify about what God has done for you. And I just praise God because I stand here today thanking Him. In spite of what I am not doing, He's always with me. He kept me and He always opened the opportunity for me and my family to talk about His goodness. Yes. And I stand here today being a proud, a proud great grandma to not only three times. And I thank God because I'm still able. You know, I could have been sick, wheelchair bound, and everything. But he rose me up again by my two feet and allowed me to enjoy his gift for me in my life. Right. And I, you know, I think back about the pillows for Mother's Day that the brothers that gave us. And it so happened that my pillow said, you are a blessing. Amen. And I took that at heart. I keep thinking about what it said. You are a blessed woman. Yes. And I hold on to that because the prayer of the saints that helped me go through the trials and tribulations of my life. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to say that, you know, um, when I first came here, I came here for a healing of my body, and I wanted to ask that uh, you guys would uh, continue to pray that I am healed. I'm trying to learn how to believe that I mean, not to walk in life since I know God can do it, uh, but I have a problem thinking that he do it for someone like me. So I would just, I want to ask you guys to pray that, to, for me to know that he loves me too. Amen. Amen. And I haven't done too much for him not to heal me. Amen. So I, I just want to ask you guys to continue praying that you guys go for me and you guys pray for my sister. Amen. 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 Even though my, and also too, even though my van broke down, my mother actually let me park in front of her house and I can sleep on the couch and then she said, save up all your money so you can buy a new uh, van or something, a new user, you know, and you don't have to worry about it breaking down anymore. She's 88. She's a young witness. Very nice here. She threw me out for being uh, a Pentecostal because she said that speaking in tongues was a devil and I had uh, I had a spirit of the Antichrist on it. Anyone who you know, that Pentecostal is holding this all that she said. Yeah. But now she said it's okay to you come in the other couch and say money. So God is good. Amen. 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 Lord.
thank you guys so very much for everything for letting me come here. But I do need your prayers for me and my family. I do have some difficult problems, but I really appreciate y'all praying for me. You know, you know my church, I got some good little bit drama there, but you know, God knows. God knows where to go. And he knows where to go. But you know, I'm a Christian woman, but I just want to let you guys know. I'm here. I'm here with Jesus and with all you guys. Right. You guys are here. We know we're here for one thing. That's right. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Turn it around. 
everybody's fanning, everybody crying. Yeah. Seem like no one don't want to praise God. Come on. Amen. Yeah. You know, sometimes AC and you know not having music, sometimes that stuff just has to happen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To see what whether, to see what's really in you. Yeah. Yeah. Mess with me too and trying to tell you, you know, cut it short, you know, it's hot, yes. you know, and, you know, let the people go. You can never try to talk to me like Pharaoh, you know, let the people go. But I'm telling you what, yeah. come on, somebody. should not hinder, amen, and it should not stop the way that I feel about it. 
Amen. And you have to understand that sometimes these things happen to us because we become complacent yeah. and we become used to and we depend on certain things that drives us and that moves us, amen, to praise and to worship God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. amen to my Come on, guys. And, and I want to encourage us because, you know, sometimes we're not going to answer to Rachel and praise thing. Amen. And we've got to make music and melody in our hearts in the Bible. Amen. 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 Sing and make music and sing the songs, the, the, the songs and Amen. making melody in our hearts, singing praises unto God. Right. Amen. Got the fans going on. Got the y'all fanning like crazy. I know it's hot. I'm hot. I'm sweating up here. You got these lights on me. <laughs> but God is still good. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Towards the end of September, where things should be cooling down, but it's getting hot. But you know, I love times like this because it serves as a reminder, amen, that I want to go to eternity and be with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Because when I read the Bible, the Word of God in the book of Revelation, they've had a lake of fire. They're talking about it just burns and it never stops. It's hot. Somebody say it's hot. Yeah. This hot right here ain't nothing compared to the other kind of hot that we're trying to stay away from. Amen, somebody. So, I mean, we are still blessed. We think about those that are out there in Africa where it's really hot and they wearing suits. And uh, dressed up. And boy, I tell you, you know, sometimes we can be spoiled here in America. Oh, Amen. Right. With this little heat that we got. This ain't, this is really actually a lot cooler than, than most places. Amen. So if you would just bear with us as we uh, get into the Word of God. Amen. 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 Uh, we don't want to cut God short of anything. Yes. Amen. And uh, especially the Word of God because we do need the Word of God today. Amen. We need it more now than ever before. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We would like to acknowledge our visitor, Amen, and our guest uh, this morning, we have with us, which is Sister Norby. Sister, God bless you. Yes. Thank you for coming out. from Richmond, California. Amen. Thank God for you. And also, uh, Sherry Lewis. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming out and visiting with us on this morning. So much appreciated. And there are other places that you all could be, but thank God that you chose to be here with us. I would also like to acknowledge all those that are streaming in. From wherever you're streaming in from, God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Taking your precious time out and being with us. I know some of you cannot make it here. Some of you can't be out in public places. Amen, because of what you are battling and what you are going through. But nevertheless, God has provided an avenue for you and I to be able to connect on social or Ustream, amen, on live broadcast. We're just so excited about that because we're able to touch lives, amen, that we, we're not even aware of. And so we just thank God for that. And also it's good to see, amen, Shantina here with us today, amen, a little bit, a little baby, praise God, amen, the gift of life, amen, from God. Amen. Congratulations and thank you, amen, because you know you're hanging in between, amen, life and death, amen, when a mother is um, birthing a child, amen, it's a 50-50, amen, those of you men that don't know that, it's a 50-50 chance, amen, there have been some mothers that have passed, amen, trying to give birth to a child, amen, but thank God that she has made it out, congratulations to Sister Lucy, amen, being a great grandmother. Amen. And Sister Laura being a grandmother. Yeah. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Everybody, look, 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 you know you're climbing up there in the evening. You ain't to the grandma status. You graduated the grand from mama, now you, you know, the soccer just starts all over again. Yes. But the good thing about being the G's, uh, the G and the GG's, the good thing about being, you know, the, the, the grandmothers and the grandparents. You can spoil the child and yes. say, here, take your child back. <laughs> we'll see y'all next or I'll see them next week. <laughs> you know, then let the parents deal with the discipline 
my wife. I couldn't even spoil us like that because you was my child. If he was my grandbaby, then you know, that's something different. Yeah. And I had uh, experience it with Brother Rico and Sister Rachel's uh, uh, child there, uh, Ryan and Rome, and, and boy, I, I, I tell you what, it's, it's a never-ending job. Yes. And so when I see everybody else being becoming, you know, uh, a legit grandparent, you know, I just want to want to be. I'm just a want to be. <laughs> finances they've been in the last three years and then you know whatever yeah. God's will is. Listen, children are an inheritance of the yes. Lord. Yes. And the Bible says, Amen. Blessed Amen is the fruit of the Lord. Yes. Amen. And bless the man whose quiver yes. is full of them. Yes. Amen. So children are a blessing. But as always, we always want to operate in the will of God when it comes to, yes. to children. Amen. We always and God. You, you talk about Planned Parenthood. Amen. It's right here. He's the original uh, Planned Parenthood. Amen. And if we listen to the way that God has instructed to you and I, Amen, how to deal with life and how to raise family, how to, to deal with our children. Amen. amen. It, it, it goes. Everything doesn't become perfect, but things will become a lot smoother. Amen. Then if we would just jump out there and just started doing things on our own uh, uh, thoughts and just, you know, on our own, just operating on the wind of things, you know. God is so good. Let me share this with us before we get into the Word of God. I was sharing with somebody just this weekend, you know, the thought continues to come to me. As a matter of fact, just this morning um, at the bakery shop and witnessing to a uh, young lady there, single mother with three uh, young children. But the thought continues to come to me in that church is viewed and God is looked at as something that is outdated, irrelevant, not for anything. But if, if you and I, put me on a lapel, please. But if you and I can grasp the concept and instructions that God has given to the body and to the church, is that it's really not about spirituality, although it is. It, God is not really about I mean, he is about spirituality. I don't want to say this the wrong way. It really is about spirituality. But the spirituality, because, and, and the reason why I'm, I, I'm bringing this up again, and I've said it time and time again, because there is a myth out there when people, uh, the perception of church and the perception of what God is, that it's all about being holy, which it is. It's all about living a godly lifestyle, which it is. I don't take anything away from that. But really what God and the Word teaches us is that when we get our spiritual life in order, our natural life falls right behind. Amen. 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 Very familiar passage of Scripture that we read it all the time. If you can just put it up real quick. This is not the message, but... We'll eventually get there. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. Amen. And prior to that, because I want to keep this scripture in its proper context. Because we as Christians throw this scripture and we really do a lot of damage to the scripture. And giving the scripture to people that are not of faith. And uh, some of the principles, the principles they, they apply. Amen. God, there is a contingency plan that God has for you and me, or let me say it this way. The blessings of God are contingent upon our behavior and upon our actions. 
Did you get that? God blesses us. That's an absolute fact. But they are contingent upon our obedience to the Word of God. And they are contingent upon you and I living and walking according to God's plan, His purpose that He has and He has designed for you and me. Prior to this scripture here, God talks about, amen, don't worry about tomorrow, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. And he talks about the necessities of life, amen, and he talks to you and I as the believer, amen, that you don't have to worry about these things. But in Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33, he says, to seek ye first the what? Yeah. And, which has to do with what? Your spirituality. That's your spiritual connection. Amen. And once we are connected spiritually with God, then God then begins to navigate our life naturally. Are you with me? Stay with me. Because there are some things that you and I are trying to go after, which is in the natural, but you're disregarding God and you're leaving him out of the equation of what you are trying to accomplish you are. Again. Yes, <clears throat> Again. Amen. Church and God, it's all about spirituality. Amen. But the ultimate purpose is that, that God can bless our lives here on earth and how to dwell and interact with each other. So that we can continue to show God's grace and show God's mercy. Amen. Because if you are successful spiritually, there is no doubt in my mind that you are successful naturally. Amen. Now you can be successful naturally without being successful spiritually because we see that all the time. Amen. We use Bill Gates all the time. We use, you know, Steve Jobs and all these guys. Amen. That is because that is from ambition. That is from hard work. That is from, you know, the stick to itness. Amen. Not giving up. Amen. Um, just following basic biblical business principles on how to build wealth. But at the end of the day, when it is all said and done, where is my spiritual life with God? Because I would rather be successful in my walk with God, be poor, amen, down here, and at the end, amen, of my days, my last day, the end of, amen, my expiration date. I'm in the kingdom of God. Yeah. I'm in peace. And so the Bible says here, amen, to seek ye first the what? Yeah. <laughs> and this. Yes. And what happens after that? Oh. And all these things, what things? If you go back up to verse four or five verses prior to this, he talks about that. The necessities of life, the things that you and I need for our survival. He says that all these things will be added unto you. Yes. But first you got to seek God. And God would then begin not only to teach us, amen, what it is that it is expected of us. Not only our behavior, not only how we ought to walk and carry ourselves in our relationship with Him, but He will teach us how to be blessed here. On this earth, he'll teach us how to manage our money. He will teach us how to become good stewards. He'll teach us how to respect one another, how to love one another. These are the things that happens, amen, when you're in the church. And see, and God and the church, I guess we're just going to have to stay on here because we want to debunk the myth. This is why it is imperative for you and I as, as church people, as a people of God, amen, to respect people, amen, regardless of what they believe and what they don't believe. Amen. God has called you and me to be a light. Let your light. He didn't call you and me to, to argue against people when it comes to the word of God. He didn't call you and me to, to 
debate against people. He didn't call you and me to stand up and not for what your churches believe in. What, now, I'm not saying that you ought not to stand on the word of God. We need to stand on the word of God. But first and foremost, God has called you and me, amen, to be a light to the world because he said, let your light so shine among men that they may see what? Your good works. Your good works. Your good works. Your good works. My good works. Not that they can see your good works, our good works, amen, so that they can glorify us. But the Bible says that they may see your good works, that they may glorify who? God. What is it that causes me, amen, to do the good works? It is the God that is in me. It is the teaching of the word of God. It is the obeying of the word of God. It is living the word of God. And is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that causes me to work the good work of God. Why are you doing what you're doing when they keep talking about you? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you keep bending over backwards? Because it is the good work. Because my whole plan and my whole purpose is to win somebody to God. It is to show hey, that, that Christ really is living inside of me. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, when you have to correct somebody and when you just have to cut people off for certain things. That, that's not what I'm talking about in that. I'm talking about in that just uh, uh, applicable, uh, just basic fundamentals, amen, basic principles of living. Give me Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 12. I think we talked about this in, 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 in Bible study. The golden rule. Which from time to time we have to go back and then reevaluate and to remind ourselves how to treat one another. Bear with me. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you we almost done. Because we're not almost done. I ain't even got into the message yet. There's a lot. Just want to talk to just about some basic things of, of, of living. I'm telling you, if you want to be blessed, look, because we can sing, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field, but then your home is a wreck. Your life is really a wreck. How can you sing something, hey amen, that's really not a reality in your life? Come on. I can sing it with conviction. Listen, there's a there, 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 there is a difference between singing the song and singing it with conviction. Yes. You know when someone just sings a song and you just see them getting, whether it's a praise or a worship song, where they're just crying and boo-hooing to God, praise God, and I mean just the spirit of the living God is just overtaking them? That's the person, amen, that's been convicted of that song. That's what that song because It's a reality, amen, in their life. That's, they're not just singing the song, they are the song. I can see I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. Sickness and poverty, they must cease. For the devil is defeated, for we are blessed. I can sing that because I know that I'm blessed. Listen, you got to sing and praise God with confidence and with yes, Lord. And I want to move us, amen, from singing a song to becoming that song. I want to move us from, amen, doing worship and being worship. I don't do worship. Worship is a lifestyle. Praise God, no matter whether I'm up, no matter whether I'm down, no matter whether I've got money, no matter whether I go, no matter whether I got food, no matter I don't got food, I got gas. I got a car riding a bike or a bus. I'm still going to praise God. Yeah. Because my praises are not predicated upon what I have. They are not driven by circumstances. They are driven because I owe him my worship. Yeah. I owe him my life. Because I'm waiting for me. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And when we begin to move in that mindset, of praising and, and just getting, you know, just losing yourself and forget about what's on the outside of these four walls and just know what's in the four walls. It's you and God. Yeah. Yes, 
And watch God just begin to work things out on the outside. Yeah. You will always praise God. You know, what, what is that one song we sing around here? I'm trading in my sorrows. Yeah. I'm trading in my pain. Yeah. For what? For the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Come on, some of us, we need to stop singing yeah. it and start beating that song. Yeah. When you leave, see, because it's so easy, praise God, for me to sing and to grab my brother's hand and sing and dance around here. Mm. How about when we walk out of here? Mm. Thank you. The devil ain't defeated, but now I feel defeated. Uh, I feel defeated and I'm lying to myself. Uh, I just sang a lot in church and I feel defeated. I'm not blessed. I'm not blessed in the city. I'm not blessed in the field. I'm not blessed when I come and when I go. Sickness and poverty, they still exist. For the devil is the truth. And I'm not blessed. I'm not blessed. I'm not blessed. 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 What's wrong with you? I'm not blessed. See, that's what happens when we leave out of here. We begin to flip the script and we begin to tell some. Listen, some of us, we persuade ourselves, amen, that you're not blessed. Amen. But I'm telling you, you've got, listen, amen. you can make it, amen, you are blessed. Even yes. if it's not about a feeling. It's not about a feeling. It's not about a feeling. Listen, there's some time when you're not going to feel that you're saved. There's some time you don't want to feel that you're married. Listen, there's a lot of times you wake up, you don't feel like going to work. But you know, if you don't go to work, you ain't going to get paid. You don't worship God, praise God. I don't worship God because I don't get paid. I worship God because he's good to me. I worship God because I know. And I'm telling you, you can make it. Thank you, Lord. Come on, man. Yes, sir. I want to challenge us. Thank you, Holy, Holy Spirit. Let's stop singing the song. And let's start being the song. Huh? Thank you. The difference between a man that got up and read Psalms chapter 23 and the man that was living Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Come on. Put that up there real quick. Psalms chapter 23 and verse 1. I see you. I see you. Listen. The harder you fan, the longer I'll preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all in trouble now. I'm checking on my coat. But at least y'all get to fan. I don't want no fan. Thank there you go. Everybody just fan. Let me see if I can feel it. Isn't this keeping you awake now? I know it is. See, I got to give you the word because you know what? Some of you, some of you, the, 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 the devil is telling you, come on, Pastor, you need to hold me up. It's not only hot, I'm missing the football game. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, did I strike a nerve? Thank you, Jesus. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's just, take your time. I got my okay. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you got no money. The elder said something this morning. He said, those of you that are from the islands, from South Moore, y'all ought to be used to this. Uh. <laughs> That's why our homes are built with no doors and no windows. This is why they, That's how they sleep. They sleep on the floor with just a little old thin mat. Because it's hot. It's humid. They go to church that way. Come on. Yes, sir. Thank you. Lost my heart again. <laughs> Psalm chapter 23. Verse number one The Lord is my what? I shall not what? What? Thank you, God. David, amen, understood, amen, that when the Lord is, knowing that the Lord is his shepherd, how many of you really understand this? The Lord is, that means that God is our shepherd. He takes care of us. That's what a shepherd does, amen, in, in herding and taking care of the sheep and the flocks. He protects them. Make sure that they're fed. 
because they can't do for themselves. They are not hunters, they are the hunted. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good God Almighty, I'm going to Listen, I'm going to lift you up out of your situation. The reason why you always feel attacked, the reason why your money is always funny, the reason why, praise God, you're always emotionally up and down, the reason why you're struggling and that trying to find a place, the reason why you always got problem on the job is because you are the hunted, you are the prey. Hallelujah. God. God deals with us, say that, and he gives us different analogies. You and I are all sheep. Yeah. Listen, I'm a sheep too. Yeah. Hey Amen. I'm the under shepherd that he has given to me to feed the word of God. Amen. Hey to feed the people of God. Hey Amen. The word of God for the sustainment. Hey Amen. So that they can become strong. So that they can have something inside of them. Hey Amen. That will keep them. Come on. Lord. You can't feed yourself. You do this as an analogy, as in a sheep. That's why he says, the Lord is my shepherd. You are the prey. You're always, amen. That's what the Bible talks about. I forget the scripture. But he said that we are a sheep laid astray. Amen. Going to the slaughter. And so that's why you always go through trouble. That's why the enemy is always messing with you, amen. Because you're not a hunter. We don't go after people. You don't go after your own kill. You don't go after your own food. It's supply. So the Bible says, that God shall supply. All of your need, you feed you. That's why God has put the man of God behind this pulpit. Jeremiah 3 and 15, I will give you pastors. Amen. According to my heart, that will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Amen. That's the job of the shepherd. Me being the shepherd, the under shepherd. God is the bishop and the shepherd of my soul. Yes. We take our instructions and our order from God to give to the people of God so you can get to this place where you're not just reading Psalm chapter 23 and 1, but you become Psalm chapter 23 and 1. That the Lord is my shepherd. But how do you get there? Go back to Psalm, Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else will be added unto you. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. There's nothing that I want. Amen. There is nothing out there that I desire but the things of God. Thank you. Yes. You're the hunted. Someone is always coming after you. That's why the Bible says, Amen. Be sober. Give me that. First Peter, I believe, chapter 5 and verse number 8. These are all familiar passages of scripture that we continue to rehearse. Amen. Every periodically. Because you're the hunted. Ooh, God. Well, that was straight fresh from heaven. That's why you don't need to backbite. That's why you don't need, praise God, to take vengeance. You don't need, praise God, amen, to, I'm going to get you back. You don't need to take revenge on nothing. You know why? Because you and I were designed that way. You and I were designed to follow the leader. You and I were just designed to listen. And follow that voice. That's why the Bible says, Amen. Jesus Christ said, Amen. My sheep heareth my voice, and another they will not follow. Me. That's why every time you hear the word of God, you're sharpening your ears, Amen, to know what the, sound, what the word of God sounds like and what the voice of God sounds like. Amen. What does that say? Be sober. Be vigilant. Because you're an adversary. The devil. Here's the hunted. Looking for his prey. That's why we go through stuff. 
God, would you just please let this thing pass me by? You can't. Because as a prey and as a person that doesn't hunt, there's somebody always after you. There's somebody always lying on you. There's somebody always trying to take advantage of you. Hello, somebody. somebody. You, you know what I'm talking about because you got that look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All kind of names come up in your mind. Not only their names, but you see their faces. But that's by design, sweetheart. That we are made the prey. Be so vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a one, he comes as an imposter. He comes as a fake and a phony. He tries to scare you with his roar. But when you got the word of God, when you listen, you got to know that we have the lion of Judah. Yes. Jesus Christ. He says he comes as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom we what? Yeah. Yeah. That's all the wolf is trying to look for. He's trying to look. Listen, you know when that wolf is out there in the countryside and wherever the sheep is, you know what he's looking for? The weakest, weakest. Huh? The weakest sheep. What? The weakest one. He's looking for the weakest link. But, not, yeah. but how, how does he know the weakest link? He's he looking for that sheep. Everybody is over there on the right side. He, he or she over here by, her, by him or herself. Doing her own thing. And you know the sheep, all they do, they just constantly eat. Yeah. They just constantly, they got their head down, they ain't up looking nowhere. Okay. But when you're in the pack, somebody can at least warm. When you see somebody running, right. you don't act. Why is everybody running? You don't get an answer, you just look. <laughs> Why are you running? Because everybody else is running. What's going on? Something's happening. Come on. <laughs> But when you all by yourself, see, this is why you can't leave, amen, your brothers and sisters, amen, in Christ. You can't do things out on your own, praise God, in the kingdom of God. You are not a lone ranger. You ain't John Wayne. <laughs> you ain't Starsky and Hutch either. Some y'all don't even know who Starsky is. <laughs> That's old stuff, man. Let, let me see if we can bring it down to you. You ain't. Uh, uh, Chit, John, and Potch? <laughs> I see a little bit of <laughs> what's, what, what's, what's the dynamic duel they got nowadays? Batman. So I can get all my young audience and know that I'm sitting here. Y'all can talk, Big Man. Huh? Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody say praise. 
purpose. That happens by design. It happened because we are intentional about it. Amen. This whole unity stuff don't just come together just because I want it. It comes together because we are intent about it. Yes. Yes, Lord. One of what? One, one of the things, amen, that I pride myself on that when people come here, one of the very things that they say about this church is it's very friendly, and y'all say hi, let's keep it that way. Amen. Amen. Let's keep it that way because people matters to God. Yes. You got to understand something. We whether you're saved or whether you're not saved, amen, you still the pray. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Praise the Lord. What got you in here, amen, was because they was after you out there. When you come in here, you discover they still after you. I got, I got away with it. No, you're not going to get away with it. You just learn to deal with it, baby. And when you come in, you know how to deal with them. You know how to love them. You know how to treat them. You know how to play with them. You know, come on. That's what the Bible said. We talked about that on Wednesday. Love your enemies. Amen. Come on. 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 Pray for them yes. that despitefully use you yes. and curse you. We just learn how to do that as being the hunter. We know how to do those things here on the Lord's side. I'm telling you, I'm a much better person because he got a hold of me. Yes. Amen. A lot of you, praise God, I wonder. I would hate to see y'all in the alley. Okay. Amen. Y'all was mean. Y'all was just ugly and nasty. Right. Some of y'all didn't play. You would tear somebody off in the New York Minute. You would shot somebody in the New York Minute. That's why I thank God that he changed my mind. I thank God that he changed my way. Because I had nothing for the goodness of God. Thank God. You know that the God in your mind is changed. Amen. How many of you, you feel like a softie at times? Boy, yes. That's me now. Yeah. I'll be walking away from certain situations and I'll say, man, he just pumped you. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like he bad. And I say, man, it's all what? Right, right. That's all right. I ain't got nothing to prove. Right. You go through, listen, man, that's normal. Right. Why? On. Because you are the hunted. They want you. John 10 and 10, he said, I come, the devil come, the thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I like that thief call when Jesus said, but I come, that you will have life, and that you will have it more than me. Come on, I've got life, and I've got it more than me. What are you talking about? I'm not just happy, I've got true joy. to 
walk around defeated? Right. Because you know, give me uh, Psalm chapter 23 again, son. That the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not go. Listen, in other words, another way of saying that scripture is, amen, I don't need to worry, I don't need to fret. God got my back. I don't care the sickness, the diseases that you, 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 you're going through, the battles. Hey, man, God's got your back. Boy, I've had a rough week this week. Tired of that work, body was just shutting down. Trying to get used to this eight hour work again. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful. But I had one, two, three, four people, all the way from the top, my supervisors, to all the way down to our leads. One of them said to the boy, I want to be your father. I said, You need to slow down, boy. I've been seeing the way you're working around here. You're doing too much. Another person caught me in the bread room. You need to stop. We just cut off our conversation. I asked him about a certain time. He just ignored me and went straight to you. You need to slow down. In a loving way. He said, See, you didn't look good at all yesterday. You're doing too much. I see you running around. And he got on one of our leads. He's working too much. Then they tell me to slow down. I can't slow down. This is my nature. I'm not a lazy person. Why am I saying that? Because when you're walking with God, God will begin to put favor in your life. Yes, From the plant manager to the supervisor to all of your needs, yes. telling you just sit back and do nothing and work for eight hours. Yes. And get paid for it. You can't tell me I don't serve a real cop. Yes. That happens when God is your shepherd. Yes. You shall not walk. That's what I'm trying to move us to. And what God ultimately wants us, amen, to be is not just the scriptures, amen, but we become, we live the scriptures out, amen, where I can confidently and boldly say that the Lord is my helper. He's a helper in the time of need. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall I want. Verse number two. He made me to lie down in green pastures. That's all that sheep is looking for. There's something green. Green and lean so he can eat. Something that's comfortable. But you can't get too comfortable. See, you know the problem, the thing with, not, not the problem, but the thing with the sheep are. They lay out there and they have no cares in the world. You know why? Because they know that the shepherd is looking after them. The shepherd's got an eye over them. Makes a lay down in the green pasture. He leadeth them beside the still waters. He leadeth them. God leads us. But beside the cow more so we can get something to drink. He feeds us. Causes us to lie down in green pastures so we can eat. And then one after you eat, praise God, you know you got to have something to wash it down. He leads me from time to still walk. And here's the key. You've got to be led. Yes. And you've got to follow him. Amen. The shepherd knows what the sheep needs. God knows what you and I need. That's why you can't go out on your own. God go right, you go right. You don't go left or you don't stop. Or keep going straight. Because you're going to find yourself in trouble waters. And not still waters. Verse number three. For he restored my soul. He makes you fresh. He gives you joy in your soul. You feel good. I mean, you sometimes you just come to church, or sometimes you just at home, you just driving in your car, and you just feel all the woman on the Holy Spirit. Man, I just feel so good this morning. Now you want to buy, you want to buy lunch for the whole department? <laughs> 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 Oh, I guess like that sometimes. Right. Well, I gotta take you one of the I mean, you just want to do a good, good deed. You just feel good in yourself. Right. Right. I mean, these are the type of things that God does for us. The way that He makes us say that what you money can't buy this kind of stuff. You know, there's a difference between you know someone having a whole lump sum of money and wanting to buy people stuff because you can't. 
and just feeling good amen, about your soul, praise God, being restored, that God has restored you. That He's placed things back into your soul that have been depleted and been taken away. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name. Say, listen, this is, this is the shepherd of our soul. Where does He lead me? He leads me in the paths of what? For whose sake? For His sake. That's why we've got to follow God. Don't follow man. Follow the word of God. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because He will lead us in the right direction. Verse number four. We're almost done. Now I can say we're almost done. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Told you we are the hunted. There's times, amen, that we're in a sticky situation. That my life is in jeopardy. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear. 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 I'll fear no evil. Why? Sorry. Because you gotta know that God is with you. He said that in Matthew chapter 28, verses what? 20, 21? Amen, that I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art what? With me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise God. The sheep ain't got nothing to worry about as long as he see that shepherd with his rod and his staff. Said that, I said this before and I'll say it again. That, that staff represents, amen, twofold purpose. That is to drive the enemy out. Any wolf, anything that tries to come and overtake you, and that's to sasa you and eat you over your head. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> to get you in yeah. my chest. trying to be bad and get over there with everybody else. Not trying to be the Lone Ranger. Jesus. And you have to also understand, the sheep also provides its wool for the shepherd. But that wool grows back. I mean, the way that God designed things and the purpose, man, it's, it's out of this world. If we learn to tap into it and follow it, man, our lives will be Bless beyond measure. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have, praise God, amen, my cash count yet. But I'm telling you, I am blessed. Yes. Man, I've got joy on the inside. Yes. I have no worries in the world. Don't mean that I've got a bank account that's full of money. That has nothing to do with it. Because I don't care how full your bank account is, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you still go be broke spiritually. You still gonna be bankrupt spiritually. Yeah. You still gonna be that nasty old dirty person. Yeah. That nasty old mean person. You still gonna be that person until Jesus enters into your heart. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. He would then begin to bless you and bless your ways and bless your life. Yeah. You know why? Because you know how to be a blessing. God mm -hmm. with me, that rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. This is what God is to us. Verse number five. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. <clears throat> Thou preparest a table. That means he blesses you right before your ears. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. He blesses you right before your ears. That's why some of you, you can't get rid of them folks in your life. The harder you try to get rid of them out of your life, amen, they just keep coming and they come back with other folks. <laughs> <laughs> they get one more familiar faces, but listen, they have to be there. You know why they have to be there? That you can't get rid of them? Because if you can't, if you, if you can't get rid of them, or if you can't get rid of them, then God can't prepare this table before yeah. you and the enemy. Uh, yeah. That is a mark, amen, and that is a sign to your enemy that you belong to God, that I'm blessing you no matter how hard you try. Yeah. No matter what plan you see, you devise and try to take my son and my daughters away from me. I'm letting you know that there's a spread right here, that they're blessed. Thank you. Yeah. 
Because they not bowing, they not begging, they not giving up, they not giving in. That's why I'm telling you, you can make it, you can do it. Yeah. Amen. Don't you let yeah. circumstances, amen, yeah. situations yeah. cause you, amen, to lose your mind. Yes. Hallelujah. To give up on God. Yeah. You need your enemies. Another reason why you need your enemies in front of in, in your life is because if you don't have a man, then you can't love them. God places people in our lives so He can teach us something. Yes. Praise the Lord. I know it's unfortunate. I know it's mean sometimes. I know I told you last week to cut some folks out. I know that you can still cut some folks out. But there's just some folks that you know you cut off, they just keep going. Yes. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yes. yes. So you know you you you, you got a phone. You, they fat. You cut them off. Another person coming in a different form. They skinny this time. <laughs> God places people in our lives so that He can build us up. Amen. And help us to depend on God. They are yes. necessary. Amen. For our Christian and our spiritual development. Amen. What are you talking about? This whole church thing and why we come and praise and worship God. This is for my development. You are being built up from the ground up. Yes. Not beat up from the feet up. God is building you up from the ground up so that you can be somebody. Amen. In God. Yes. But that you can live all out your purpose and his design that he's already destined for you and I. Don't you know that you and I have already been, been predestined? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You read the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and he tells us that. Yeah. Hmm. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup running oil. What is that oil? That oil represents a man. Blessings. That's how they survive. Remember the woman they had that had the son? The prophet come by, I believe it was a lion. Bake me a cake. Or well, with the oil, she needed to pay her debt. The prophet told her to go gather all kinds of pots. And he says, don't borrow, not a few, but get many, get a lot. She said, I only have just enough oil. She said, the prophet told her to fill up. All them pops. That oil just kept on running and running. The only reason why that oil ran out is because she ran out of pops. Yes. That oil, amen, was their sustainment. That oil, amen, was their substance. Amen. To keep them going. Their livelihood, if you will. By it, God is just, He just wants to bless me. That that that, that oil, He said it run over. With my head, God anoints my head with oil, and my cup running over. God just want to, amen, just bless us beyond measure. Amen. I give you life and life more abundantly. God just don't want to give us just enough. He wants to give us more than enough. Doubles for your troubles. And verse number six, this is the key thing right here. This has to be your greatest desire and what's really in your heart. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell. Thank you, Lord. In the house of the Lord forever. Yes. Don't walk away from God. Don't walk away, amen, from the ministry. Don't walk away from the church. Because the minute that we walk away from, from the church, I'm not saying this particular church, I'm just talking about in general. Because when you walk away from church, you walk away from God and you cut yourself off from the blessings of God. Hey. God no longer becomes your shepherd. He no longer becomes your protector or your provider. Now you're just out there on your own for the wolf to attack you and overtake you. Hallelujah. That's why I'm scared to walk away from God. I, I, I couldn't even imagine anymore my life without God anymore because I've experienced too much with God. This is the, the best thing. This is the best decision that I have ever made. And that was to serve God and give God my life in 1997. We had a rocky start. But good God Almighty. Listen, and it's still rocky. For those of you that are just coming into this thing, 
talk to you about a few weeks ago. I know it, get, it gets rough and it gets harder than you want to quit. Well, I'm telling you, it's supposed to be that. That's normal. Thank you, Lord. Some of you, when you're, ex you're sharing your experiences with me, you're so relieved when I tell you that it's normal. Mm -hmm. That it's supposed to be like that. Because God is trying to build you up and all you need to do is put your faith and your trust in God. Thank you. Amen, Amen to my Amen. I want to give the Lord a hand clap. Nothing. 
praying too hard for God. If you would just put it and leave it in God's hands, that God is able to do it. You believe God. Come on and follow. Amen. His elder anoints these with oil. You have called. Amen. And pray the prayer of faith, whatever it is. I will answer. In the name of Jesus.
you gotta turn the black thing off first. It's too late, just turn it off already. Yeah, that, you turn that off first and then you turn off the bar now.